Hello everyone. In this video today, we will cover what's new in the latest release of the data loading tools. Since the initial release of the tools, we've added new data mapping capabilities. In this release, we've added new parameters to the Create Data Loading Workspace tool, including predictive field matching options and predefined mapping. A new Generate Predefined Mapping table tool was added to help you customize and streamline the mapping of datasets, fields, and attribute coded value descriptions. Moving forward, some Esri solutions will leverage the predefined mapping capabilities to provide industry-specific mapping tables. So first, let's review the new parameters in the Create Data Loading Workspace tool. In the Source to Target Mapping parameter, Workspace to Workspace Source and Target Mapping is now supported. This means that you can now set a geodatabase as your source and a geodatabase as your target, and similar feature classes will be matched automatically. You can also use this along with the new predefined mapping parameter to improve the dataset matching. Note that you can still manually specify each source and target feature class. The predictive field matching options are optional. You have two options here, and you can decide to enable either or both. The first option is for matching the fields from the source to the target schema based on their similarity. And the second option will do the same for coded value descriptions. Next, the predefined mapping parameter is also optional and can be used to perform substring matches for datasets, fields, and attribute domain coded value descriptions based on the predefined mapping table. The parameters are optional and are not dependent from one another. For example, I could decide to enable both the predictive field matching options and the predefined mapping, or I could decide to use one or the other. So now let's take a few moments to go through an example. I will be loading data from a stormwater network data model into a geodatabase using the ArcGIS Solutions stormwater utility network data model. With the update, I won't need to manually match each individual feature class. While this is still an option, I can now simply add both geodatabases by dragging and dropping them into the input parameters. Similar feature classes in the geodatabases will be matched automatically when running the tool. Then I can choose an output folder location for the generated data loading workspace. So now if I skip the optional parameters, and run the tool as it is, it will generate the data loading workspace in my destination folder with some of my feature classes from my source and target geodatabases being automatically matched. The automatic matching will work if your source and target schemas are similar. But since my source and target are not very similar, the resulting data loading workspace won't be very useful. So I may want to take advantage of more parameters here before I run the tool. So in my case, I have two options for mapping my feature classes. I can either map them individually directly into the tool parameters, which used to be your only option prior to this update, or I can use a predefined mapping table. So let's use the predefined mapping table since this will save me time moving forward if I need to quickly recreate my data loading workspace. So we'll skip the predictive field matching options for now to look at the predefined mapping parameter. Predefined mapping provides the option to either browse for a predefined mapping file, which can be a CSV or a table, or I can create a table right here in my project and start manually matching substrings. To be able to create a predefined mapping table, I will first need to add a map to my project. Next, I can create a table and open it. As you can see, the table is empty of records, but has three available input fields, match type, substrings A, and substrings B. The match type can be either dataset, field, or attribute domain coded value description. And this is important here. It's not the coded value itself, but it's the description that we're looking at for similarity. The table is used to match substrings. The order in which you enter substrings is not important. You can write your source and target strings in either column, substring A or substring B. Substrings can be anything from a feature class alias, the alias of a subtype, a field alias, 
or of coded value description. So now let's use this table to map our source and target feature classes. All my entry types will be data set. And by comparing my source and target, I can quickly start assigning a source feature class to its target. For example, SW fitting will be mapped to stormwater junction. Now, since my target data model has subtypes, I need to map my subtypes accordingly. In this case, I use a dataset match type, and SW fitting will be mapped to the fitting subtype. For the specific case of a data model with subtypes, mapping the feature classes is not required. You could decide to only match the subtypes in the table and still get a successful feature class matching in your data loading workspace. So I will repeat these steps for my other feature classes and their subtypes. And when I'm done, I can now save my edit. The predefined mapping table is already selected in the parameter. So I can now run the tool. This will create a data loading workspace in my output folder location. In the data reference sheet, I can see my source and target FISA classes have been matched successfully, also taking into account the associated subtypes, as outlined in the predefined mapping table I have created in the previous steps. Next, I'll take a closer look at one of the data mapping workbooks such as the one for fittings. The field names and the values that were exactly the same between the source and the target were matched, along with the subtype values in the assay group target field. Field names and values that are similar but not exactly the same were not matched. So at this point, I can use a predictive field mapping options provided in the Create Data Loading Workspace tool to automate the matching of these similar fields and values. The predictive field matching uses fuzzy logic built on top of the Levenstein distance algorithm to match data sets, fields, and coded values descriptions between a source and a target. The Levenstein distance algorithm is used to quantify how dissimilar two words are to one another by counting the minimum number of operations, such as removal, insertion, or substitution of a character, that is required to transform one string into another. So for example, on your screen here, the distance between the words rain and shine is of three. Since there are three operations that are required, and you're assuming that these operations all have the same cost of one. The smaller the distance, meaning the least amount of operations at the lowest cost, implies that there's a greater similarity between two words. So that aside, let's go back to ArcGIS Pro. And in the predictive field matching options, Let's enable the field name similarity. This option will automatically match field names from the source and target based on their similarity. If we now run a tool to generate a new data loading workspace, we can observe how this works. In the fittings workbook, I can now see that fields with similar names, such as symbol rotation and rotation, were matched. For fields which have a domain assigned, these will only be matched if the source and target domains have identical coded value descriptions. For fields with domains which have only similar, but not identical, coded value descriptions, I will need to enable the attribute domain coded value description similarity parameter. So now if I go back to the tool and enable that option, all similar values will be matched. Again, value matching won't only match similar values, but also looks at coded value domain descriptions in order to match fields. In this case, the field names are ignored and fields are matched based on the similarity of the value descriptions in their domains. So let's run the tool once more and take a look at these results. If I open the fittings workbook again, I can see my lookup columns have been filled out. These are filled out based on the domain value descriptions being similar between the source and the target domains. In this way, the fields is connected and enabled were matched along with their values. If I look at the matching for fitting type, 
I can now see that similar domain value descriptions were also matched. For example, cap and end cap. Overall, the matching is not perfect. And this may require some manual input to correct and complete the mapping of source and target datasets, fields, and values. To do so, I can then use the predefined mapping table and add any values that were not automatically passed. So for example, I can see that the fitting bend wasn't matched with any value from the target data set. In my table, I can add a new row for attribute domain coded value description and add the two new substring bend and elbow. Now if I run the tool once more, I can observe that the value bend is now matched with elbow in the fittings workbook. And I can keep going on and add new rows in the table for all the substrings that are not identical or similar when comparing between my source and my target. Finally, when I'm done, I can run the tool once more and get a more complete data loading workspace ready to be used to execute the data load. When I'm happy with how I've configured my data loading workspace, I can export my configuration using the Generate Predefined Mapping Table tool. This tool generates a predefined mapping file that can be then reused in the predefined mapping parameter of the Create Data Loading Workspace tool. This will save you from manually migrating your configuration when creating a new data loading workspace. It can also be shared with others to create a data loading workspace that is comparable. For example here, now that I'm done mapping my stormwater assets data from the source schema to the target schema, I can add my data reference workbook to the tool and run it. The table is generated and I can now use this table again in the future with my source and target stormwater data models to quickly recreate the data loading workspace. In this way, industry solutions will be able to provide a predefined mapping table to help you migrate your data into the solution data model. For example, the water distribution solution will be provided with a predefined mapping table to help you migrate your data into the utility network data model. I hope you now have a better understanding of the new predictive mapping capabilities available with the data loading tools, and that these will help you save time when you next need to load data from a source data model into a new target data model. If you have not had a chance to view our previous videos, visit our community page for more resources and links. These videos do not include the new predictive mapping capabilities, but they are a great way to learn about the data loading tools and to get you started with the process. Get the tools now and start your own data loading project. If you have any questions, visit the community page and stay tuned for future resources and updates. Thank you.